Today, I'm going to show you how to give your photos that soft and dreamy look. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace, and you can find me on flurn.com, where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And today's episode is going to be super cool. We're giving an image a soft, dreamy look. You can do this with wedding photos, portrait photos, children photos, anytime you want that like light that kind of just looks like, oh, so soft and wonderful. This is going to be a perfect episode for you. In just a few steps, we're going to show you how to duplicate your background layer and give it an iris blur, blurring the edges and giving it a softer look. Then we're going to duplicate the light in the image, give it a blur and make that soft light look. We're going to add a little color toning and then we're going to be done. All right, guys, we got a great episode. Let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop. Here's our image for today. We've got a really nice bride looking out a window and this is the perfect type of image for this soft dreamy look because we got a lot of white and we've got large light sources. So when you've got large light sources, especially if they're backlit, meaning the lights are going to be behind your subject, this is the perfect opportunity to create the soft dreamy look. Let's go ahead and start off by duplicating our background. So we're going to click here on our background and drag it to the new layer icon. Then we're going to turn this into a smart object, which is going to allow us to use smart filters. All right, I know that sounds complex, but if you've never done this, super simple. Just right click on your background layer, okay, back, the background copy here. Right click on the background copy and go to convert to smart object. All right, once you see this little icon down there, you know it's a smart object. Now a smart object will allow you to use smart filters. Well, a smart filter will allow you to change the filter at any time. So even after you've applied it, you can change it at any time. So here on our background copy, which is now a smart object, we're going to go to filter. We're going to go to blur gallery and over here to iris blur. Okay. Now here in our iris blur, we're going to see some different controls here on the right, basically how much blur we want to apply our image. Okay. And then here on our main image, we have our little uh, control that actually controls where the blur goes. So we'll talk you through this. Here in the center we have our blur center. So if I click here and move it around, you can see the center of my blur just kind of changes. Now you want to make sure that's right at your subject's face because your subject's face, we don't really want to blur our subject. Next we have our median. This is where you can see it's blurring closer to the center and further out. Okay, we want this to be about halfway. And then we want to bring our outer edges. We're just going to click and drag this out to pretty much the outer edges of our photo. Okay, we want this to be a really nice gradual effect. So just click and drag out. You can zoom out if you want to as well by hitting Control or Command minus or plus will zoom in, minus will zoom out. So I suggest zooming out a little bit so you can get a good idea of what you're actually going to be doing with your image. Okay, now you can change your roundness here by clicking on this square, the roundness of your actual blur. Let's go ahead and make it a little bit more square because we are on a square looking image. There we are. And here you can actually choose how much blur you'd like to apply. So this ring right in the center, we can increase the blur. You can see there's a very blurry image and decrease it down here. Now I suggest doing something that's subtle. Uh, so in this case, we're going to go to about 87 and you can see, I'm going to hit this checkbox. There we go. Let's zoom in here. I'm going to hit the checkbox so we can see there's our before and after. So relatively subtle there. You know what? I'm going to bring this down just a little bit. We're just going to type in 80 and it'll be good there. Okay, so we do have that soft dreamy look kind of going on with this blur. Again, we, we still see all the detail we need to where our subject is, just the edges are giving that soft blur. All right, let's hit okay. All right, after we hit okay, it's going to apply the blur and here we can see this is our layer, which is a smart object and here we have a smart filter. Now, remember earlier when I said convert your layer to a smart object so we can use a smart filter, I highly recommend using smart objects and smart filters because you can change them at any point in time. So let's jump back in. I'll show you how to change it because you might make an effect and decide down the road that you don't like that so much. So we're going to show you how to change it. Jumping back into Photoshop, if you want to add or remove your effect, you can go to your smart filters. Here we go. And I can click on this eyeball and just turn them off and on. Okay, so I can just turn that blur that I applied, I can turn it off and on, which is really cool. If I want to change the amount of blur, all I have to do is double click right here, which says blur gallery. So double click right there 
and I'm right back into my blur dialog and you can see I can increase or decrease the amount of blur that I have here. Okay, so by using smart objects and smart filters, we have a lot more options when it comes to our image. Okay, so that's our first step for creating a soft, dreamy look. There we go, is giving our image a little bit of a blur. All right, now our next step is actually gonna be duplicating the light from the image. So we blurred the entire image. Now we're gonna duplicate just the light of the image and give that a blur as well. It's gonna be a really great effect. Okay, so jumping back in, how do we select out our light? We didn't, we wanna blur our light. And in this case, it's you know coming from these windows and right up here, but how do we blur just that? Well, we're gonna start off by turning it into a selection. So let's go ahead and create a new layer. There we are. I'm gonna to go to select and then we're gonna to go to color range. And here you can choose the color range of basically any part of your photo. So in this case, it's selected on like the darks or whatever. But if I click on my windows right here with my eyedropper tool, so click on your eyedropper and then go to your windows, you're gonna see now we're selecting out the color range of our windows, okay? Now here you can choose what's called fuzziness. If I make this lower, it's gonna select less. If I make this higher, it's gonna select more. For this effect, I would suggest going a little bit lower, somewhere right about there, okay? It's okay if this area gets selected a little bit. We just want these light areas to be selected. So I'm gonna hit okay. And what it's gonna do is anything that's light will become selected, anything that's dark will not be selected. So let's hit okay there. And now we can see, here's my actual selection. Okay, right in this light area, there we go. And here on our windows. Okay, now in this case, we can just either fill this with a color or duplicate it from our background layer. Okay, now in this case, our color is pretty much just white. So now that I have this a selection, I can hit shift delete, which is the keyboard shortcut for the fill dialog. And I'm gonna say fill this with white. All right, so I've made my selection. I'm gonna fill it with white and hit okay. All right, I can deselect by hitting control or command D and there we go. So the image doesn't look that different as of, yeah, as of now, but if I grab my move tool, you can see basically on this layer, I've got just the light from the windows here on this layer, okay? I can just hit control or command Z to move that back. All right, so we made our selection of the light and then I filled it with white, pretty cool. Now we wanna go ahead and give the light a blur as well. So in order to do that, I'm going to right click here on this layer and convert it to a smart object because we're gonna be using a blur and I want to use a smart blur. So now that we have this as a smart object, let's go to filter, down to blur and over to Gaussian blur. Okay, now here in our Gaussian blur, we can choose our blur radius and you can see as I go further and further out, it's just blurring the light in my image because we just selected the light. So the only thing on this layer is the light. And now as we bring our radius up, we can add or subtract more of that blur, which is really, really cool. And this is what gives the image that soft, dreamy look. So let's say we wanted to do our blur. Let's say we go way up there, all right? And then we're like, oh, this is so great. Uh, I'm gonna be the best photographer in the world. And then we come back a week later and we're like, whoa, it's too much blur on there. I can't even see my subject. All we have to do is double click here on the Gaussian blur and we can just lower the blur later. So you can decide at any time. Now, what's also kind of cool, let's say we do want a little bit higher of a blur. I'm gonna duplicate this layer by clicking and dragging it to the new layer icon. So now we got even more, but let's say this layer, okay, this layer, we want that kind of blur. This layer, I'm gonna double click there and we want a lot less of a blur. And then I can just simply choose my opacity. So for this one, maybe I want this to be a little less visible. So I can lower down my opacity right here. So we have a couple of different blurs now. We've got one that's a little bit smaller, okay? And one that's a little bit larger. There we go, with less opacity. And we can go in here and change these blur levels at any point in time. I could make this one really big if I wanted to, but we're gonna keep it relatively small. Hit okay, and I'm gonna change my opacity down there as well. So now we've got a couple of different layers that are giving our image that nice blurred look. And you can totally decide for yourself how much blur. You know what, in this case, I wanna go even more. There we go. A Little bit more of that soft, dreamy look. 
<laughs> this is fun for me. I hope you guys are having fun too. All right, so there we have it. Let's go ahead and turn these layers off and back on, and that's the soft, dreamy light look. All right, so we figured out how to select the light from our image, and then on a new layer, we filled that with white, turned it into a smart object, and then added a blur, and that's what gives us a, a soft, light look. Now, we're going to do a little bit of color toning to the image, and then we're going to be done. To add our color toning, we're going to do this really simply. I'm going to go to Layer, down to New Adjustment Layer, and we're going to go to our Levels. Okay, let's hit OK, and here we have control over our levels. So if I want to take my darks in my image and make them a little lighter, I can click right here and make our darks a little bit lighter. Now, in this case, we have a pretty light image, so I'm OK leaving it right where they're at. Now, you can also change color with your levels. Here where it says RGB, this is going to change the red, green, and the blue channels, okay, which basically just amounts to light and dark. If I want to go to my blue channel and I click here, now I'm going to able to add a more blue into my shadows. Here we could add some green into our shadows if we wanted, and here I could add red into my shadows. So let's go back to our blue channel. I'm going to add a little bit of blue into our shadows, and if I pull this from the right to the left, it's going to add a little bit of yellow into our highlights. Obviously, that's way too much. So we just want to go just a tiny bit. Now we've got a little bit of yellow and a little bit of blue, giving our image a really nice color tone. So let's just turn this off and on. And you can see, let's zoom in a little bit. There we go. Off and on, giving our image just a little bit of color. And we're going to go ahead and lower that opacity. All right, guys. Well, that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and shift click all of these layers. I'm going to hit Ctrl or Command G to group them together, and we'll hit F for full screen, and then we'll show you the before and the after. So here's our before, still a beautiful image, and here's the after. Now we got that soft, dreamy look we've all been searching for. <laughs> and that's all there is to it, guys, how to create that soft, dreamy look in your photos. If you want to do the same thing, just follow these key steps. First, start off by duplicating your background layer. Go ahead and right click on it and go to convert to a smart object. This will allow us to use smart filters, which can be changed at any point in time. Then go up to filter, down to blur gallery, and over to iris blur. Here you can use the controls to make sure you're blurring the edges and not the center. Once you've added your iris blur, it's time to select and blur the light. Go ahead and create a new layer, go to select and down to color range. Use the eyedropper tool and click on the light. It's going to turn the light areas into a selection. And you can use your fuzziness to decide how much actually gets selected. The lighter areas get selected and the darker areas do not. After you've made your selection, you can either duplicate those pixels from your background layer to duplicate the actual light from your background, or you can simply fill this with white, which is what we did in this case. Now, you've filled it with white, go ahead and deselect. We're going to turn this layer into a smart object and then go to filter, down to blur, and over to Gaussian blur. Choose the amount of blur you want to create your image that soft, dreamy look. Because we turn this layer into a smart object, we can change our blur at any time. And in this example, we actually duplicated it and used two different layers with different amounts of blur and changed our opacity to allow them to blend together. And to finish our image off, it's time to color tone. Go to layer, down to new adjustment layer, and over to levels. Now, in this case, we used our blue channel. We brought up the shadows a little bit and down with the highlights, adding blue to the shadows and yellow to the highlights. Guys, thanks so much for watching today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Super quick, and you can add that dreamy look to any one of your photos. If you love Photoshop and photography as much as I do, go ahead and click on your screen right about now. We'll send you free Photoshop and photography episodes every single week. And if you have an idea for an episode or a question to comment about today's episode, simply leave it right down below. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much, guys. I'll floor you later. Bye, everyone. Soft and dreamy. Make your photos look soft and dreamy. Ugh. <laughs> soft, dreamy. Give your photos that soft, dreamy look. <laughs> that was maybe the lamest thing I've ever said in my life. Let's leave it in. Keep it. That soft, dreamy look we've all been searching for. All right. Good job, everybody. So soft and dreamy.